You are watching Gooch Live. I'm Kerry Goulet, better known as the Gooch, and featuring Paul Rosen. Better known as Rosie. There you are, Rosie. How are you, buddy? Good to see you, kid. Hey, this is unbelievable. I actually, hold on. For those of you that know me and know my trouble with uh, with technology, I actually have a laptop I'm working off of right now, thanks to my sister, it's uh, and not a phone. It's like I, I feel like I'm in another world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you are in another world. You're uh, where Scarborough? I can never remember. I always forget. Oshawa. I'm, I'm in I'm in Thornhill now. I'm at my yeah. sister's house in Thornhill. Well, you know what's really exciting? We got some really cool guests today. But this one, the next one that's coming up, is a little wacky. I love him, Sebastian Portier with One Hockey. He's going to be on here in a second. We're going to talk to him all about his great program. He does a lot of things around the world with youth hockey tournaments. Sebastian, how you doing, buddy? Hold on, I'm trying to get myself straightened up here. Oh, oh you look good. Okie dokie. You look good. I, I broke my teeth. I uh, broke my teeth last week, so. Yeah, well, you know, you're not yeah, looking that's that bad. Why. You're not looking that bad. And There's the, dentist, the dentists are closed, so I can't get new teeth. So that's yeah. what the problem is right now. That's all right. Listen, we're just uh, fortunate to have you on. You were down having some fun, I think, in Puerto Vallarta? Uh, no, Dominican oh. Republic. Uh, right. I was supposed to i was going there to uh we're going to start doing soccer tournaments and in, uh, in punta Can punta cana yeah so oh, that was cool. the reason of my trip with uh, obviously some pleasure as well right well paul i don't think you've been sebastian, but sebastian's one of those guys that uh, has uh taken a good hockey career uh, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes and turned it into a business he was a uh, a coach uh he actually uh, did a lot of hockey schools and then what he did is he developed this program. I think it was 2004. Sebastian, you're going to bring it up. It's called One Hockey. You're going to talk all about that. So uh, I know I got to meet you when we were down in Philadelphia. He helped support the Stop Concussion platform. Now you're going to get involved with Connected, the mental health uh, initiative. So thank you for all of that. But Sebastian, let's walk through your, your hockey career first and then how you got into the One Hockey program. All right, you ready? I'm going to go... I'm going to go through many years, but I'm going to go quick. I hate to make people wait. That's always how I've been. All right. And we'll just jump in. Paul and I will jump in when we know that you're telling us not the truth and we'll say something about it. I say only the truth. Uh, please stop me whenever you can because I won't stop. Uh, so I'm from Sherbrooke, Quebec. Uh, that's where I was born and raised. Played the minor hockey in Quebec uh, until I was 16, 17. Ended up being drafted with the, 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 the Granby Bison in the Quebec Major League. Uh, for the ones I remember, Philippe Boucher was an NHL solid, pretty good player. He was on my team that year. He was drafted just before me. I was drafted right behind him. I was second round. Uh, I had a pretty decent season in juniors, but I just didn't feel like did the best I could or that did as good as I could have. Uh, maybe some coaching issues, but anyways, that's a long story. We're not going to get into that. I got invited to the Montreal Canadiens training camp in 90, 93, I believe, 92. Uh, had a great camp, did really well, uh, made up, made it through the rookie camp to the Montreal NHL camp, which was pretty exciting as a 18 year old kid or 17. I think I was, um, uh, first exhibition game. I remember the story like it was yesterday. I always talk about it. Actually, my friends all know the story, but, uh, I'm in the locker room before the game. The coach is talking about the game and he, he speaks English. I don't speak a word in English, so I don't even know what he's talking about. I'm just focused, getting ready to play. He's like, who, this who was coaching? Sebastian, who was coaching? I was pulling Bordelot. Uh, Sebastian is his son. He's a really good player. We're actually, we're yeah. friends. I was actually sending Pauline a message last week on on Messenger. It's kind of funny. Uh, he goes on, he says, don't fight this guy. There's a big guy near the team. He's, sick. he's like, he's just a big goon. Don't worry about him. I don't know what he's talking about. So I played a game halfway through the game. I go, I go hit the guy pretty hard. I was a pretty good hitter for the size I was. I was six foot, about 180, 182, but I hit like a, like a guy that was probably a 6'2", 230, 240. Long story short, I hit the guy. He dropped his glove. I dropped my glove. First punch, I punched him. I get him. I cut him. But my shoulder dislocate in the same time as I punched him. So I go down. I'm done. I'm in the locker room. Jacques Lemaire is there, the guy that really liked me, uh, which I can't thank him enough. My dad was there. And my dad's like, oh, you're not going to punish my son for going to bat for your team and fighting for you guys. Jacques Lemaire says, we're going to play your son eight games, and we love him, and now he's, he's going to have surgery. So the next day at the forum, they decided to sign me. 
Jacques Lemire talked to Sir Shavar, and he's like, I told this, I told the story to Sir Shavar at the uh, LA NHL All Star game last year when they had the top 100 uh, players in the in the league in LA. I sat down with Serge and I told him the same story. And so, so Jacques Lemire has Serge Savar. Uh, hey, this guy Sebastian Fortier, you know, uh, you know, he, he fought yesterday. We we're gonna let him. We're gonna sign him. We're gonna let him go. And Serge Savar is like, who the hell is that, Sebastian Fortier? Oh, just do whatever you want with him. It's your guy. Like you, you invited him, not me. So <laughs> so they signed me for three years. So that was the highlight of my career by far. Year after I got cut, last guy got cut in American League. Got ended up going to the East Coast League. Uh, I got to tell that story because I had a coach there. Uh, I can't bring his name up. I don't want to destroy his career, but some people know who he was. Oh, his career is already over because he's retired, thank God. But the guy was probably the worst coach in hockey history. Uh, <laughs> used to run practice with jeans on. Uh, he had, like, these gloves. They were, like, kitchen, like, uh, dishwashing gloves yeah. with his jeans on. And this big straight stick, and we had the same practice the whole season. It was the same exact practice every day. We used to rent a car. Marky Matthew, which played for the Bruins, we were both there together. He's from uh, Quebec as well. The guy used to rent us a car. The car was worth about 500 bucks. It was this big boat, you know, like, and we paid the guy 600 bucks a month to rent his car. That's how bad this guy was. He's I mean, pretty smart. He's making money <laughs> We, the, yeah. as, soon as, we, as soon as we got there, the first thing he says, well, you guys are going to need a car. You know, I'm going to get, you're going to rent a car from me. We're like, okay, coach, uh, where do we, who do we pay? Where does it go? 500 bucks, 600 bucks a month. Anyways, I, you guys want to, want to jump in or you want me to just keep going on my, well, no, you know what, as you're talking about your car, I'm going to tell you, I know you got your notes. I can tell you just quickly about the car I got in Germany. They said I was getting a new car, going to this new team, and I was so excited. I got there. It was in 1979. I got there in 88, 1979 uh, uh, Volkswagen Derby, and it was lime green. And I said to the guy, what are you talking about, new car? It was a new car for the team. Yeah. Oh, my well, God. I, I can tell you real quick what you said about the coach. I can't do a car story. But my first year with Team Canada in 2000, as uh, you know, a 40-year-old rookie playing for uh, the Canadian team, getting ready for uh, the, the the Olympics in 2002 in Salt Lake. That coach that year, he didn't know anything about hockey. Uh, hopefully, he's not watching. He comes into my room and asks me about drills. What drills should do? This is Team Canada, Sebastian. This is not like a joke. This is had no clue. We weren't a part of Hockey Canada yet, and he came on with the broom, uh, the uh, the kitchen gloves, the the same thing. That's why when you said that, I was going to. Was his name? Going. Was his name? Was his name Doc Sutter? <laughs> no, his name was not Doc Sutter. It, 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 his his name was Pierre. Um, and we'll leave it at that. It was yeah. absolutely brutal. I've never never been in a situation like that in my life. Kitchen gloves as a coach on the ice. Hey, you are watching Gooch Live. We've got Sebastian Forche, Paul Rosen, and uh, Sebastian John Kirkard saying hello to you, saying, hey, mister, how you doing? Hey, mister. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Jim uh, Bowden says, fly puck rules. So you know about that. And Jim Pickford uh, says hello. All right. So oh, I got to go to the public chat. Sorry about that. I, that's I just, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, Sebastian, hey, tell, so, us, tell us a little bit yeah. more about your, just before you retire from playing. Yeah, anyway, so I ended up moved, playing in Phoenix my last couple of years. Uh, where for the Phoenix Mustangs, okay, okay. I mean, the first six months I got there, September 20th. First six months I was there, I don't think I saw more than like three clouds in six months. So I'm looking at, at this, I'm like, I'm not going back to Quebec. Like, what am I, why would I ever leave this place? So, spend the, I spent the summer there where everybody went back. I stayed there because I was teaching, uh, what well, I wasn't teaching then, but during that summer. Sean Skinner, which is a very well-known hockey yes. coach, a uh, yes. good friend of mine, one of the, probably one of the best stick and lean coach I've ever seen. Uh, this guy's like, "Hey, you want to come and help Sean Skinner in the hockey in his hockey school next week?" I said, "Okay, five hundred bucks, I guess. I'll I'll be there. What time?" I go I go on the ice. I see this guy teaching these kids, and he's starting to teach me his moves. And I'm like, "I'm like, I can't do that. I can't. I mean, I, when I played, I had one move: fake left, go right. That was the only move I had. I mean, nobody <laughs> taught me anything else. Just a." Uh, Anyway, so throughout the schools, I love teaching kids, and I discovered that I was like, I love kids. I don't have kids, right? So I love working with kids and seeing them learn, and I was very meticulous in my teaching. Like, I, let's say you're, 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 you shoot right, right? I shoot left, so I'll put you in front of me so, I, so you can just mirror me. 
And if you shoot left, I'll put you behind me so you can mirror me as well. So I always kind of recreate a mirror. And that's how I became a good teacher as far as I'm concerned. But these dads, after the hockey schools, these dads come to me and say, hey, Sebastian, I remember this dad, these two dads, one of them was like the owner of Houston Steakhouse with the first Houston restaurant in the, in, in ever. Yeah. And the other one was like part owner of a, it's like a Chinese, uh, anyways, another huge, I'll come back to you, another huge restaurant. They like, say, hey, can you teach my, our kids next week? I said, what do you mean? Like how? Well, we, you know, there's ice available and every Tuesday night at five o'clock, we'll just come and you can work with our kids. Oh, that's cool. Teach him. He said, we'll give you 150 bucks an hour. I said, yeah, I'll be here. Like, okay, see, see you Tuesday. So I started teaching these kids. The next thing you know, I have like two, three, four, ten kids. So I'm splitting them into groups of four. Now I have three groups. Every group is like 250 bucks. So I'm becoming, you know, good at this. And I have a good, because word of mouth, I was good. So then I started to play hockey with the Phoenix Mustangs again the year after, which is summer that I stayed in Scottsdale. So all the team was staying in Northwest Phoenix. It's still nice, but it's not Scottsdale. Anybody that knows Phoenix knows how nice Scottsdale is. Yeah. Uh, and so we go back on the training camp and the coach like, uh, we're going to move to Scottsdale next week. I mean, to Phoenix. I said, no, 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 I'm in, I'm in Scottsdale. I'm good. I got my place. Just uh, I'm not going to over there. I'm, I'm in Scottsdale. This is the hottest spot in Phoenix, in Arizona. The coach like, no, you're going to go with the boys and we're all moving together. I said, no. I said, I quit. I'm done. He's like, what? I said, listen, I'm already teaching kids. I'm making more money teaching kids in three hours a week than I'm making playing on your team. So I'm done. If you want me to live in Scottsdale, I'm, I quit. He goes, all right, you can live in Scottsdale. Then we'll give you money for your apartment and help you pay for it. So I live in Scottsdale. Then I was teaching, I was teaching hockey before games. That's a crazy story. We had to be in the locker room at five o'clock uh, Steve Parson. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Thunder Bay uh, in a minute. We uh, we had to be in the locker room at five, so I would start teaching my four kids at four, which was right by the locker room and right there. But no, I had my teammates, the other team that were there watching me on the ice, like, hey, this is, this is sports here. He's teaching kids. What the hell? Is he not playing anymore? So by the time I get off the ice and collect my money, the, the lo- I was late. I was like 15 minutes late in the locker room, and I would walk in with my skates on, well, these guys are like, what are you doing? I said, well, I just, I was teaching kids. I just, just made 300 bucks in an hour. I mean, <laughs> would you, would, wouldn't you? I guess. So now people start, players start getting upset. And yeah. the coach, Brad McCauley, uh, McCauley, such a nice guy. And eventually he met with me. He's like, Sebastian, you got to stop, you got to stop your lessons. I said, no problem. Just uh, in the next paycheck, is it in two weeks? Just make sure you add a thousand bucks to my check and I'm done. He's like, I can't do that. I said, well, I can't stop my lesson. I quit if I have to stop. I'm done. He's like, no, we need you. He's like, I was a fan favorite. I you know, played very physical. I love watching me play. Uh, anyway, so I kept going. My, I kept teaching. One a quick story. In the, when I played in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Uh, I was Thunder, Bay, Thunder Bay Twins. Thunder Bay what? I played for the Thunder Bay Twins. You did? You never told me that. Yeah. A long time I, ago. I was playing. I was what? playing with Thunder Bay. Long story short, I fought this guy. Next, I go back on the ice, and I wasn't getting too much ice time, but I was physical, and these guys, died, and they love the physical play. I go back on the ice, they send their a really big uh, player against me, and he's just jumped me, and he just nailed me. My nose is like, I get in the penalty box, and I got to check my nose. My nose was here. <laughs> Put my nose back, and I'm like, go back in the locker room, couple stitches. The guy wanted to put a visor. I'm like, no visor. Screw that. I'm going back on. He's like, dude, your nose is here. I'm like, it's fine. I go back on. The fans were freaking out. Yeah. So the game after I was on the bench, I wasn't getting too much ice time. The game after, all of a sudden, I'm starting to hear like, four shit, four shit. The whole rink is ch- chanting my name. So I'm looking at the coach. I'm like, you're going to put me on. I mean, they're calling me on. You're going to put me on now. So he was like, all right, go ahead. And I just go and just nail somebody and whatever. Hey. Anyway, so... After Phoenix, I moved to California. I started doing hockey schools. I had hockey schools across the country uh, in like 10 different states from the West Coast to the East Coast. I started coaching kids. uh, And every tournament I went to, I was always disappointed because it wasn't fun. My dad used to run a big tournament. You guys might know of that. I don't think I've ever told you that, Gooch. No. In Sherbrooke. It was called the Sherbrooke International Bannon Tournament. Absolutely. Uh, It was my dad's tournament. 
My dad wow. took it on in 89. Wow. The city was, they gave it to him. It wasn't him. It was a city. But he said, I'm going to run it for you. But you let, let me do my thing. Whatever I want to do, you say yes. First thing he asked him is for $20,000. They look at him and like, what? Are you Why? Are you crazy? He's like, because I got to bring the Red Army from Moscow and the Moscow Dynamo. Here, I got to give him 10000 bucks a piece because they have no money. I'm going to help them come here and help them for their flights and all that. So these two teams came. Next thing you know, you got Little Caesars, Honeybake, Toronto Marlies, Junior Canadians. Yeah. And three years after, believe it or not, he had 12 countries in his hockey tournament. Crazy. That's before cell phones, before the internet. My dad used to carry, my dad's a mailman. He used to carry this big cell phone. It was like yeah. as big as a Motorola. mailbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Motorola. Motorola. Yeah. yeah. And he went into it all day. And then at night, we, he had a fax in the guest room. The fax would go on all night. And every time you heard the fax, you had to get up to, to watch it because he was too curious to see who's faxing me. Yeah. Oh, these stupid guys in whatever country. Uh, you know, like, it, you know, it was coming in all night. Like, it's one, one, one day every two weeks, you like, tonight, turning this freaking fax beeper off. I'm sleeping tonight. Every two weeks. So he, he ran a tournament, made it so big. Next thing you know, uh, in 2000, he asked the city for a little bit of money for his time because he was getting beat up. It was 10 years. He was so destroyed. The city says, no, we're not getting you any, any money. Thanks for your time. It was great. We'll take it over. It's easy to run these tournaments. No problem. Two years later, whoosh, they destroyed the whole thing. Done. Uh, so I start, I start going to tournaments, and I was expecting a tournament like my dad. And every time I was coaching my teams, the tournament was horrible. I mean, you walk in the ring, it was like, where's the tournament? Are we at the right place? There's no music, there's no nothing, there's no ambience, there's no awards, there's no decoration, there's nothing. So I asked my dad, I said, Dad, can you help me start my own hockey tournament? Because there's a, there's a need for good tournaments. Yeah. He says, absolutely, son. So that's how I started one hockey. So the first year, we did the first tournament in Quebec in the summer. Because summertime was easier because you don't need any sanctioning. You can do whatever you want. There's no rules in the summer. There's no sanction for the most part. Uh, so I started selling the tournaments. Nobody wanted to play they were all asking me, like, who, who was there last year? I said, it's the first year. But my dad was pretty good at this. I mean, look at what he done. Nobody cared about my dad or what he did. So I, I sat down. I'm like, I, I can't have my tournament. Nobody wants to play. And then I'm like, I got it. I want to make my calls because I know people on the West Coast, in the Midwest, and on the East Coast. I want to call people I know, and I'm going to build my own teams. Call them, call them Team One Hockey. So I built six teams, two West Coast, two Midwest, two East Coast. This guy that I met in Minnesota, when I had a hockey school with nine kids one year, yep. the dad comes to me. He's like, are you the guy in charge of this school? I said, yeah. He's like, what, with all due respect, what the hell are you doing here? You got nine kids. I said, I know. No one knows me here. I bet you next year we'll do better. better. He's like, all right, we'll see. Then the year after, we had 40 kids. The guy invited me, invited me over to his house for dinner after the week was over because his son couldn't stop. Talking about me, his dad is like, you, I'm so sick of hearing your name. You got to come for dinner tonight. I said, okay, I'll be there. So the next year, he took two teams. The guy was with the Minnesota Blades program. He took two teams from the Blades, 1991 birth year, 1992. That is the year that Rocco Grimaldi played in my tournament in Sherbrooke the first year. He yeah. filled up the rink. In the newspaper, it says, come and see Gretzky Jr. He was like this big. And he was playing with kids a year older. The first game, he scored seven goals, six assists. First game. People were freaking out. Anyway, so I started running tournaments. Next thing you know, I have tournaments all over the U.S. Now we have tournaments from the East Coast to West Coast, about 30 a year, and we're growing. We're actually trying to acquire some tournament groups right now, uh, as a matter of fact, to because it's hard to add more tournaments because there's no ice available. Right. We're just, part we're just partnering with a program in Burlington, the Burlington Junior Cougars, which are now called the Burlington Raiders. They're partners. We have a partner in New Jersey, the Junior Titans. Right. We partner with the Hurricanes for a while. We partner in California with the Junior Rain, which is the LA Kings farm team. Long story short, we have a lot of tournaments now, and uh, and we're loving it. I mean, it's it's really it's all about the kids for us, and right. people like what we do, and they come back. And I had a chance to witness your tournaments for a few years. I saw them obviously in Philadelphia, first class, and also in Minnesota. I came out. I can't. I think it was Blaine, Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I remember that. That minus fifty seven. That was one of the coldest. Hey, listen, wow. uh, we've got a couple people saying hello. Uh, Hans uh, Gert uh, Schofs, you may not know the name, but he's asking you, Sebastian, was Rick Aduno your coach? 
when you were in Thunder Bay. Do you remember Rick Adino? Know that name at all? No, in Thunder Bay, it was uh, maybe Parson can answer that. He's on the line. Uh, Brad something, I think. I don't. I yeah. forgot his name. Well, the reason why Hans brings that up is that he's from Krefeld, Germany, and Rick Aduno, who played in the National Hockey League, uh, was. It wasn't him. No. Yeah. No. no so he actually was a reporter, so he's asking about that. And we got Lars Klingenberg is asking a question, saying hello. Uh, he's he's noticed my shirt. This is. The Indians, the Hanover Indians, where I played. I just hey, my dad is so sad right now. There's no baseball. Yeah. The guy in between 1993, uh, no, 73 to 94, before the strike, 20 years of baseball. You know how many games he missed? The Expos all the time. It was on the radio because it wasn't on TV all the time. Maybe right. once a week, twice a week back then. You know how many games he missed in 20 years? Zero. 20 years, just so you know, 20 years is about uh, 3,800 games. Yep. Four games. You know what, Sebastian, you tell your dad, I love the Expos, and I my brother's four years older than me, so we used to drive from Toronto to see the Expos four or five times a year. My favorite, and I love baseball, my favorite player of all time was the Expos right fielder, Ellis Valentine. Oh, my dad loves him. All right. He was uh, my favorite. Andre Dawson was one of his favorite, though, the Hawk. Hey, you guys, you're watching Gooch Live featuring Paul, Rose, and the Rosie, and the Gooch brought to you by the Hockey News, and we're with Sebastian Forche from One Hockey. Sebastian, let's change a little bit. We know how uh, people can go on the website. We've got your name. You come on the, Did you? the Gooch Live. Just one sec, bud. Um, yep. You can go on the website. It's got your download, gets onto One Hockey. But you were part of the Montreal Canadiens organization, uh, you played an exhibition game. Uh, you got in a little bit of a, a scuffle. Uh, I looked at your stats. You've got a, a heck of a, a track record for penalty minutes, let me tell you. So I hope you're not teaching the kids that, but more than that. if Tell us a little bit about that experience with the Montreal Canadiens. And once you do, then we're going to, Paul, talk to him about the Montreal Canadiens. If we made Sebastian Forche the GM of the Montreal Canadiens, what would he do today? But first, tell us about your experience with the yeah. Canadiens. Well, my experience was awesome. I mean, it was the best time of my life. Uh, you know, the top-notch organization from top to bottom, from the trainers to the, the coaches, the, the, the everything. We were treated like kings. And when I went to Wheeling that first year, it was a big, uh, big wake up to would come back to reality because it wasn't, it wasn't the case. But they did what they could. You know, Wheeling was not a big town. And, right. But uh, Montreal Canadiens, I've always wanted to be a fan of them, and I am a fan of them, but I can't be a fan the way I would love to. Uh, I remember calling a radio station. Uh, I was trying to look at some rosters earlier, but I would say like four or five years ago, maybe six years ago, I called a radio station and I talked to this guy. I said, uh, let me ask you a question. I said, Bob Ganey, which was the GM back then. Yeah. I said, Mr. Ganey, does he know that this is a physical league? Is he aware that you, you are allowed to hit in this league? The guys start laughing. He's like, why are, you, why are you asking that? I said, Man, look at Gomez and Camilleri. And like, yeah. like, we have, like right now, it's the same. All of, Our team is like a, a major triple A team is bigger than our team. Maybe, yeah. maybe not the defense, but the forwards. Like, why are we always small? And then the trend the trend is continuing right now with Bergevin. I yeah. mean, it's pathetic. Uh, it, it's. I was looking at the roster the other day before before their season start stopped, but there's eight guys, including Drouin, that are under six feet. And they put Drouin at six feet, maybe with high heels, possibly. Yeah, no. And they, you know, they got they got rid of Shaw back to Chicago, but they had Shaw, Gallagher, uh, Domi. They had a, a lot of small guys, like you say, Sebastian. And they have eight guys under six feet and forward. I mean, seriously, what the hell? Plus now this this great player, Caulfield, is going to come next year. It's got an amazing talent. Yes, yep. he's small. I like small guys. But can you please not have nine and forward or eight on your team? What the hell? Montreal liked for the physical play. Like, yeah. look at look at Delaria as an example. Nicholas Delaria last year, you know, he was getting better. Yes, he's a fourth liner, maybe third line, but he's a physical guy. Now he's Anaheim's top favorite player. Yeah. He's on the fourth line, sometimes third line. Why would you let a guy like that? It's from Quebec, six foot two, physical. Why not? <laughs> we lose all the physical players. But again, I, you know, butt in on you, Sebastian. I agree. I, I'm a big, I'm a big hockey fan. First, we all know I love the Winnipeg Jets, Toronto. Winnipeg. I love anything, anything that has uh, blades on it. But what I, what I, I, the game has changed though, as you know, 
Sebastian, do you know? Kerry, Kerry, the the game has changed, but it's not a game. Look at the look at the Blues last year in the playoff. Look at them. The average defenseman side is six foot three. The forward are there's just one guy under six feet. They're all big guys. You can't win with a small team. Yes, before Christmas, no problem. After Christmas, best of luck. Wow, I I agree with you. Yeah, I'm not going to agree with you, but you can. Hey, listen, St. Louis got lucky. It was a lucky year. Whoa, lucky year, joking. Lucky oh, my you. God. Gucci, are you honestly saying they got lucky? No, I want to get some controversy because you guys are boring me. Because <laughs> <laughs> it takes 16 wins. Hey, it Mark takes 16 wins, 16 wins to win a Stanley Cup. You cannot get lucky with winning 16 games in a short period of time. There's no way. Come on. All right. Well, I know I, what, what I was trying to do is bring us back to reality is that All right. an even mix. And I think, Sebastian, you're right. I think the, the Montreal Canadiens up front are very small, no question. But I think the talent, they've got a lot of talent. And I think they got a lot more problems than just that. You know, well, I, they listen, the team has worked their butt off all year. You can't complain about the work. Great, they're there and. I'm very sad now that there's no more hockey due to this stupid virus. But uh, you know, like before the the, the trade deadline, what did what did Bergeron do the, before the deadline? Well, I don't know. Okay, so let me ask you this question, Sebastian. What would you do if you're if you think he's not doing a j- good job? You're the general manager right okay, now. Okay, yeah, great you, question. You one minute. You got one minute to tell me what you would do. Last year was time to revamp. Now it's still time to revamp. Everybody out. Price. Out, Weber, out. You still worth some money, Weber? Price, you worth some money? Out, Tatar, out. Let's get Where? some small, let's get some small guys. Let's get some I mean some big guys, some young guys that can play the yeah. game. Look at look at the, the, the uh, Vancouver. They suck for three years. Look at them now, first place. Like what it, are you it gonna do with take price? that long. Sebastian, what are you gonna do with the price? Just give them away. Nobody's gonna pay that money. Oh yeah, you're gonna find a ticket for pressure. Are you kidding me? That this team that won him, look at Colorado, they would die for him. They yeah, probably gave us two first round picks. A lot of money, a lot of money. No, 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 no. Price is worth a lot of money, and people will pay for it. So, not everybody, but some teams. It doesn't take that long to rebuild. But Montreal's got a terrible drafting system. Okay, they can't draft. They the last 66 guys they drafted in the past eight years. Guess how many guys pay for the Montreal Canadian right now? Three or four out of 66. They don't know how to draft. Get the draft team out, new draft team. Go pick some guys that can draft. Claude Julien, you know, he's a good guy. He's a good yeah. coach. But we need some fresh blood. Let's get a young guy that's coaching college right now. That's got a, 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 the, the 2020 system, the new way to play hockey. I mean, let's not go hire another Bruce Boudreau or, or Joao Quinville. Let's get something new. Let's get a, start a new, a new vibe. That's what I would do. Hey, listen, I'm taking some flack over the St. Louis Blue comment. Uh, just all the hockey fans. If you don't know it, I know a little bit about hockey, just a little bit. I was just going to get uh, peak uh, uh, our our buddy Sebastian. We're with uh, Sebastian Forche from One Hockey. Listen, uh, we're going to wrap up in a few minutes. Paul, you're going to get the last question, but I want to ask you, uh, Sebastian, the One Hockey program has grown over the years. Uh, you've been sending out a lot of emails. I've been following you. You have grown this thing from from. 2004, probably one of the largest uh, organizations. Uh, so I'd really like to know what is the future for One Hockey? Because when I contacted you last week to come on the show, you were down in, in one of the Caribbean islands planning this incredible soccer uh, tournament also. So are you going to expand more outside of hockey? Are you building, as you were talking about, some buying into some new hockey tournaments? I knew you were talking yeah. about to Russia. Tell us about that, please. Yeah, quickly, we're, we're, we're kind of... Re- changing our company uh, direction a little bit to a new company that we call One X Sports. The X is our big trademark. So One X Sports, going to have X Soccer, X Lacrosse, eventually maybe X Hockey, but One Hockey is already has a brand name, so we don't want to take that away. But we're moving into other sports. Punta Cana will be our location for soccer, uh, all-inclusive soccer tournaments uh, in Punta Cana. But with One Hockey, one thing that we're doing that's coming up uh, very – very interesting is a uh, people know the Pee Wee Quebec tournament, right? Everybody's that plays all you know from there or have been there, and it's a, it's a huge event. It's been 60 years. These guys are running this like like an NHL game. Every game is so incredible. It, it's just for the kids, the 12 year old kids. So we're doing a tournament next year for the 10 and 9 year old kids called the One Hockey 10U International Invite in Syracuse, New York. 
We partner with the Syracuse Crunch, which is Tempo Tempo based farm team. We yeah. got the whole city behind us. The Syracuse Nats, the youth program, are also partners. Uh, and we have teams come into this event. It's January 2021 uh, for five days. Right now, we have teams from seven countries that are committed to attend. Uh, hopefully, the, the coronavirus will be you know done by then. Uh, thank God, pretty good every day about that. We yeah. have programs like uh, Detroit Little Caesars, Boston uh, Advantage, uh, Detroit uh, CompuWare, and I am Ducks. Uh, every programs from all over the place that are already committed. The registrations open up next week. So this is for players that are born in 2011 and 2010. Uh, and uh, we're almost sold out already. And even with this virus, and it, it's going to be a very special, all about the kids. The kids will be treated like NHL players. First class, we're going to pack the rink. There's 6,000 seats in that rink. It's a great hockey town. It's a perfect yeah. town for this. And we're very excited about that. The, and where can they get, where can people get information on that? OneHockey.com, everything is up there, obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know what? I just got another comment uh, about you, Paul, and uh, talking about uh, Carey Price. And uh, Bruce Tennant says, Carey Price has still got it. Not much longer. It's a big contract that you're saying. And uh, the Habs would probably have to eat most of his contract. So That's okay. Yeah. They have space on their cap, and he can still get some young players. That's what I meant about that, you know, Bruce. Uh, Kerry's still a great, great goalie. He's one of the best in the league, if not still the best in the league, and I love him. But I'm just talking about a team bringing him in. The Canadians have to eat a ton of his money uh, otherwise with the cap. And now the cap's going to go down or stay the same. Definitely not go up. It's not going to be so easy to move uh, price. And, you know, with, uh, with Sebastian, the way he's talking, I'm glad Gooch, me and you don't work for Sebastian. We'd be fired like this. In no, our no, no, Sebastian, no, no. Sebastian, I'll never fire like you guys. Come on. Come on. You got to have a little controversy. Okay, you guys are young, blood, even though you're a little older. Huh? Yeah, okay. So, Sebastian, I want to ask you a question. Uh, um, last question for me. You know, obviously, you've got a passion for this game, which I absolutely love. Uh, you, you know, you want kids to reach for the stars, to grab onto uh, the, the greatness and not settle for mediocrity. It's huge. What do you think about the Memorial Cup finding out yesterday that it's done 102 years, no Memorial Cup this year in Kelowna, the Rockets would host it at Prospero Place. Um, all the kids playing in, in, uh, in uh, the Quebec League fighting to win the Quebec League to go to Kelowna. What do you say, uh, say about that? These moments are like moments in history you can never forget. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, it could, it could make it or you could break it. And for the most cases, it's breaking it. And it's breaking these kids' dreams. Now, there's some kids that could have got probably drafted because of it that I won't be drafted. Uh, the city of Kelowna, I mean, talk about a beautiful place. I didn't even know it was there this year, by the way. Talk about a beautiful place to have the cup. They're, the economic 10-pack, I mean, it, it, what's happening is just obviously mind-blowing. Uh, I guess the U.S. government uh, agreed to a big... Uh, big uh, Money, they're going to give money out to businesses and uh, the whole nine yard. It was just approved today, which is a good thing. But it's so sad what's happening. I'm in a hotel right now. I mean, I, it, it, the world has changed and it's, I'm, I'm really glad you guys are having your show. I've been watching your show and it's really interesting. And I, I don't even know if you were supposed to have the show every day. Were you, Gooch? Or just we did no, actually, uh, actually, we were planning on, we're on the hockey news. It's been put on hold, mm -hmm. of course, because the studio has been closed up. So Paul and I were just chatting. Listen, everybody's going to be sitting at home. They don't, you know, yeah. they want to, they want to have some entertainment. So we thought we could yeah. maybe entertain, but also I think we can help educate. And obviously what we did today with you, Sebastian, has really opened the eyes. There's a couple more comments here just before you go um, that, that have opened their eyes on, you know what, it's really important that we give our kids the experience. And if anybody knows about your tournaments, that's what they get. When the kids come, they're appreciated. They have they have everything just like a pro with the music, the name, their, their goals are announced, and they feel like a pro. And I think that's what we need to do more. We want to, even if you're the best player or the worst player, or you're the second goalie, you got to have fun, and you make it fun. Listen, uh, Hans Garrett Schultz has come back on and asked this question. You played in Fredrick Fredericton? Yeah, I actually called myself up from the East Coast. They cut me from the playoff roster, and I called myself up. Okay, but there was a kid named Robert Goulet or Goulet or Robert Goulet. Yeah, he's a French yeah. guy. You played with him? Yeah, yeah, I did. You know him? Yeah, of course. He's asking if you know where he is. Uh, he's in Montreal. Uh, if, uh, he's on Facebook. Uh, he can be found on Facebook uh, pretty easily. 
I don't know the other guy's name, uh, oh. Quirful uh, Pingren. I don't know what that is. Yeah, Sebastian, you have final words. Give us uh, in 30 seconds to a minute everything about you and what you're doing for the future. I think enough has been said about me. Thanks for having me on the show. That was awesome. Uh, I had all these notes written down. I didn't even look at them. I just uh, everything is in my head and everything is pretty uh, pretty well written. And I love what I do. I'm very blessed to work with kids. And to work in the in the in the sports that I love, that I breed, yeah. uh, and thankful for you guys to be on there. I really appreciate the time, and I'll keep watching. And thank you guys so much. Well, you know what, Sebastian, you are so passionate. We love the stories that you gave. So in the next two weeks, we're going to have you back on. And what we're going to do is we want to hear some more stories. I think what? people come on here. It's great about the one hockey, no question. Yeah, but, yeah. but the experiences, I'd love to hear about, you know, when you were playing down in the East Coast League. In some oh, of my God. Teams. I got stories for you, my friend. You I saw you. my first. Yeah, we, might have my to first. Do, we might have to do the uncensored version of, uh, uh, right. of live. But so you I know what? My first great, offer, right? when, the, when the coronavirus ends and everything gets back to normal, if we could come down and film a show live at one of your tournaments. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, hey, quick story. First yeah. often I remember saw was in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm there with the wheeling team. We're playing in Charleston. I'm like, are you joking? Like, th these guys play hockey here? What am I doing in wheeling? You know, in wheeling, but I was a Montreal farm team, so I had no choice. The year after, I'm like, get me out of get me out of here. Like, I gotta go somewhere nice. Look at this place. So the year after I moved to Birmingham, Alabama, and then I moved to Phoenix. But uh, anyways, I was stuck in wheeling. I'm like, is this it? Is that the U.S.? Is wheeling? Nothing else? I've never, I've never been anywhere else. So, but I got a lot of stories to uh, to save for you for next time. All right, thank you weeks, so much. You, see, you save us those stories in two weeks. We're gonna have you back on. Can't thank you enough. You are an entertaining guy. I'll tell you what, and I love your passion and I love the energy. So, you know you are too, Mister. All right. All right. You've been watching Gooch Live here with Paul Rosen, the Rosie and the Gooch. We're gonna take a little short break. It's first intermission, and we'll be back talking with Val Silva, the creator of our new show that's coming up. And I just want to say goodbye from Hans Garrett Shoulders to you, uh, uh, Sebastian. Everybody's commenting here how great of a job you've done. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sebastian. Take care. All right. That was Sebastian Forche. I'll tell you what. Wow. Um, I've had a chance to hang out with this guy. And I'll tell you what, he's one of those typical young French guys that's just got passion over passion. Everybody knows him as, as Sebs. I golfed with him, uh, tremendous golfer. I got to play a couple of games with him. He's a little bit younger than I am. Man, can he fly? He's got, uh, he's got that typical French uh, personality and, and, and love of the game. And so it's fantastic to have the opportunity. A big shout out to, uh, to him from Greg Bowden. I know they know each other. And one really cool comment came from Cam Moore. You, can, you and I can talk about this before we bring Val on is uh, San Jose Sharks. Cam Moore, I met in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, we lived with him for, with his beautiful wife. We met him in San Jose. And he actually, um, he actually uh, has been a big fan of us. He's been watching every show. And he's actually asked the question that we're talking about the Montreal Canadiens. I loved, I loved Sebastian's uh, perspective on it. I don't completely agree with it. I, I'm not sure about the Carey Price, too. I don't think you can move Carey Price out of there. Forget the money. Just the fans would absolutely destroy that that city if, if Price was gone. We know that Keith Primo's son is coming up. Uh, you know, he's still a couple of years away. Uh, but Cam asked the question, what if, let's ask, I'm going to ask you it personally. If you were the general manager of the San Jose Sharks right now, and you took out Doug Wilson, what would you be doing? I'm going to leave it to you for a few minutes. Here you go, buddy. Yeah, that's 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 a tough one. Uh, I, I think um, right now you got you got to bring some youth into San Jose. They've uh, you know we we love uh, we love some of the old guys. You know we we still got Patty Marlowe and uh, and 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 Bernsey. Um, uh, I would. I would take that team now, and I I would bring some of their their young guys up from from their farm club. I would start to get them to understand we're we're going to go from the bottom up. Maybe make some deals. I think in the off season, as as crazy as it would sound to trade a Brett Burns, um, I, I think you could get a lot for him. Uh, and I think if you if you do that and you look, I know you love Burnsy, and no, I love no, you. No, you're not touching my Burnsy. 
but I no, but I think honestly, if you if you put a Burnsy up to a team that's so close to a Stanley Cup, that they would give up a, a, a lot for a guy like Burns. Now, he may you would know this. I don't know whether he has a no movement or no trade no, contract. He's not going anywhere. But if he had a no trade contract, I don't know if he'd let it go. I know he loves it there. But to me, a guy like that could get you a lot. All right. Well, you know what? We'll be discussing that a little bit more as we go into our new show. I'm bringing uh, Val Silva, who's helping us create this new show as of next week. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, but also, his son is really, really annoyed with me right at this particular moment. I'm bringing in Val Silva. What is going on in hey guys. Tobacco? What's going on? Tobacco, where, where are you at? I'm in uh, Toronto, like pretty much in uh, downtown. How, how crazy is this? You know, we all work together, the three of us. Uh, we're, you know, we do a lot more than just a show like this. Uh, but more importantly, we're in three different parts of the city. And here we are putting on a show called Goose Live featuring Paul Rosen. And uh, you've been behind the scenes. You're doing all the graphics for us, which is fantastic. And now we're in wow. that thing because we know that you know a lot about soccer you're absolutely soccer crazed you follow the msl mls sorry uh every weekend you're texting me about how great the uh, the toronto franchise is doing and obviously when they won uh, you and your son christian they were out there partying like a bunch of rock stars um you're going to be our roving reporter for mls and also you're a big basketball fan i did not know that yeah, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Really, really looking forward to uh, coming on once in a while when you guys have me. Uh, I do have to say, yes, my son is not thrilled at your St. Louis Blues comment since uh, he is a big fan. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, hey, hang on a sec. Let me interject. He's only a big fan because of Jake Allen. Allen Cup. I'm sorry? Isn't he just a big fan because of Jake Allen because he met him? Yeah, and uh, okay. you know what? Hang on, hang he's on. A, no, no, he's a, no, he became a fan. Uh, actually, he was a, a Detroit Red Wing fan, yes. uh, a la me. Yeah. And then he just fell in, uh, became a bigger fan of Jake Allen and the St. Louis Blues, just a big fan. Okay. And, and, through, and, and through some mutual friends of ours, yeah. uh, when he turned 10, he was actually lucky enough to meet Jake. And Jake was, was like the greatest person in the world and uh, wished him a happy birthday. So that was a lot of fun. And that was Christian Hansen that, that pulled those tricks for us. Correct. Christian, a good friend. How can he be a big fan when Jake Allen didn't even play in the playoffs there and it was uh, Bingington, Jordan Bingington that won the Stanley Cup? Well, oh, there you go. But hold on. Jake is still part of the team, regardless if you're the backup goalie or the starter. It's uh, still got a ring. That's and the backup goalie sometimes has a big job opening that gate. Yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. I've done it a few times. I know what yeah. it's like. They forget right. to grease those uh, hinges sometimes. So Val, let's talk uh, about uh, let me just ask uh, Val. Yeah, yeah. So Val, I know you know you saw some of my uh, pictures on on Facebook, and you saw me with uh, Dwayne De Rosario, and I, I uh, one of the best uh, Canadian soccer players of all time, and got a chance to do a few things with him. But I'll I'll go back to you, Val, for a second, because I I had a few things in soccer years ago when I was a kid back in the seventies. And in 1976, I had a chance to go see the uh, Toronto Metro, Metro Croatia. They Metros, were yeah. they, played Var they played at Varsity Stadium back in yeah. 1976. And I got a chance to meet their goalie. And I still, I'll find it somewhere, a signed autograph from him. His name was Zelko Bolecki. Yeah, you know, the name sounds right? familiar. They played in the goalie for, uh, I think, Slovakia, Slovenia, or something way back then. But I got an opportunity to get a Zelko Bolecki signed jersey I'll find it someplace and uh, and give it to you because you love the soccer. Thanks. No, uh, the Cro the Toronto uh, Croatia Metro Croatians, I think so we call it, have yeah. have quite a large history in the city of Toronto and that football club. I think they're still around. Not, uh, I believe under a different name, but they're still there. They have been through the seventies. I believe the league was the North American Soccer League back yeah, in the day. Absolutely, we had a number of European stars come over. Uh, they played in L.A. Um, George Best was one of the gentlemen who came over, played in, in L.A. Pele uh, was here. Uh, a yeah, lot of great from played, Sevier remember, to Pele. Pele played for the New York Cosmo, if I remember. Yeah, that's right. They had a lot of people come on over, yeah. So based on that, uh, we now have MLS, who's been in the league for now 25 years. They're celebrating the 25th anniversary. Uh, as Kerry mentioned earlier, I am a big TFC fan. You know, it's our hometown, hometown uh, crowd and everything. And, yes, I'm still trying to get Kerry out to a game, you don't have to love the game. 
It's all about the atmosphere um, at the soccer, game. Soccer and cricket, they're exactly the same to me. Hey, it's all about the fans and, and the family and friends that you have around you when you're celebrating Absolutely. whatever sport it is. There's no better fans, I'll tell you, except when they get a little crazy. No better fans than uh, soccer fans, I'll tell you. They are so passionate. Yeah, we're we're pretty tamed compared to uh, some European uh, oh, yeah, countries in South America. But yeah, no, it's it's a good fun atmosphere and a fun, family and atmosphere that we have going on. Yeah. So now, obviously, uh, you're a big soccer. You, I, I guess, well, Paul Rose is also an expert in soccer. All of a sudden, I am an expert, but I go back. Well, Gooch, there's a lot of things about me you don't know, bro. No, I know that. that. That's why I love it. So that's why we're having the show, that this is more a therapy <laughs> show than anything else, and we can get to know each other. So you two, I'm going to ask you one name, and you're going to tell me who he is. Franz Beckenbauer. Of course, one of the best uh, Germans ever. Yeah, German great players, yeah. All right, you know something about it. <laughs> is that I the only name know you know, buddy? No, I actually met Franz Beckenbauer. So oh, wow. the, the coach of the, our manager of the German national team for a number of years. He's one of the greatest. Oh, absolutely. And Klingsman. Yeah. I think yours, Klingsman? Yeah. 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 I, know, I know my soccer. I went to a soccer game in Hamburg, and, and they played Boris Munchen Gladbach. And I think I've said this before. It's my favorite team, Borussia Munchen Gladbach, just because it's so hard to say. And it was, yeah. I was playing a little town called Greyfrath, very, very close to the city that this uh, Hans Schofi is from, Greyfeld. And I, I then went to go to that game, but it was canceled because of the hooliganism or whatever. And there were no fans allowed in the, in the stadium. And it would have been my first game, and I never got there. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes I do have to play behind closed doors due to uh, overzealous, excited fans. But uh, right now, everyone's playing was playing for a short period of time in Europe behind closed doors based on the coronavirus. Hey, and right now, and now right now here in here in uh, uh, North America, they're uh, just uh, waiting it out. Like uh, just recently, a couple hours ago, MLS uh, incre uh, extended their moratorium till April 3rd for players. No uh, visiting facilities, no training and everything. Right. Unless you're injured and such, like only injured players who are going in for treatment one at a time. Yeah. And they're, from what I hear, they're uh, wiping down the, their facilities and such. So, but right now it's it's a t it's a tough time in any sport, from uh, hockey to ML to soccer to NBA to um, rugby, for example. None of the players can train together, and and none of them have access to facilities. Right? It's not which just a matter sense. of uh, which makes sense. Yeah, of course. But uh, it's it's like you need to train. So once any of the leagues uh, jump back on board to uh, starting a season, which most likely will start off with uh, no fans in the venues just to get it rolling. Yeah. Um, I think the NBA is going to play the, uh, the biggest part in moving forward. When they announce, I think everyone else is going to announce. Yeah. Just like last week, uh, March 12th, when the NBA said we're shutting down and then everything else started to follow through. Right. So, I mean, well, there is hope to have back the first, in the middle. They also had the first... Uh, player test positive which made them be the first to shut down yeah so in a way it was it was a good thing and a bad thing that they had rudy gobert actually test positive so everyone can start to like realize that large gatherings aren't a safe thing to be hanging out and everything but uh there's hope for middle of may but there is also talk that uh the nba is going to come back in like june july so if that's the case then a lot of leagues are going to follow suit so here's hoping that at least if they start playing again, even if it's behind closed doors, well, we'll still have a lot of live action. You know, if there. Trump was running the NBA, they're going to be on by, I think, Easter, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's Easter. true. It's now, true. I'm going to switch it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to ask you a couple. I know Paul will ask you a couple of soccer questions, and then we'll get into the NBA. But since we, uh, since our friend Paul Rosen made the statement about getting rid of Burns, who... Uh, uh, hold, know, hold on, hold on. After I said I moment, they get rid of him. I mean, you asked me what would be the option for San Jose to become a more talented, a more uh, 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 competitive team. And I said, here's the talent you have. Use it as an option. OK, well, OK, sorry. You didn't. You said ship them out. Um, but what my point was is that as soon as you said that, you've got a lot of people agreeing with you, which I would have never in my life. Cam Green loves, or sorry, Cam Moore loves him, and he agrees with you, and so does Sebastian Forche, and there were a couple other people. So I, I, I take my, uh, I take my statement back. You know, I, I just love the guy. I've, I've had an opportunity to have him over in Australia, a first class act, uh, 
a fun guy, one of those guys you want on your team no matter what. So here to you, Val, uh, because I know you also know hockey. Uh, give us your perspective. Now you're the assistant general manager with Paul Rosen. What do you do for the San Jose Sharks? You know what? Believe it or not, I would rather keep Rose uh, Burnsy in, uh, on the squad and get rid of uh, Eric Carlson. I agree with that. I I'm actually going to agree with that because I think of you can get more and and injury. I, I just think one second, uh, Val. I, I just think you can get more for Burns than you can for Carlson because of the injury problems with Carlson. That's a good point too. Yeah, that's a good sure. point. But then if you if you get rid of uh, Burns, let's say if you get rid of if you trade Burnsy, you are going to get a, a boatload back for him, obviously, but. Then does that, how how strong is your 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 um your back line in front of Jones? That's the thing, right? So if you can get something for Carlson right now, barring aside that we stop playing uh, hockey, they the players stop playing hockey, right? His 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 ta uh, sorry his um market value for Carlson at the moment is pretty high. So I would actually take what I can at the moment, keep Burns, rebuild from the back on. You've got decent talent coming in in the front. But I would keep Burnsy. Like, uh, and you know, Joe Thornton, uh, hopefully it won't be Joe's last year either playing because of the uh, the stoppage yeah, in play. But yeah, I think Joe can go to that. about his 50. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, if Cam Moore is still on, why don't you make a comment? Let's hear what you would think you would do in San Jose. That'd be interesting to find that out. Uh, listen, a big shout out from Rich Massingham. Great job, boys. Paul, you're doing a fantastic job as usual. Um, Paul, I I'm going to give you a couple of questions here to uh, – to your soccer expert, uh, I'm not. I, I, no disrespect. I'm not a big fan. I did jump on the bandwagon when uh, TFC won uh, because I love all sport, but I just don't understand soccer uh, that well uh, because I've, I've never actually played it. Uh, the only time I played soccer was when I went over to my first training camp in Germany, uh, a little bit overweight, not understanding that I needed to be in shape. I thought we went there to get in shape in training camp. And my first coach was from Hungary, and his whole training training uh, camp was all about kicking a soccer ball and doing soccer drills. And, oh, my God, it was like me doing Pilates. It was ugly, like really ugly. Well, it's so, about the agility for it. That's what it was, right? I could dance. I was a dancer then. It's not now. So, Paul, why don't you, uh, you take over and let's, get, let's hear some expert uh, advice on what's going on in TFC this year. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go expert, okay? But back in the '70s, when I was a teenager, I played soccer and I loved it. I played for a club called Armadale, and uh, and I was a goalie. And I, I actually liked it. I had a chance to go to quite a few uh, Toronto uh, um, uh, the, the games of Metro Croatia. Pardon me, at varsity, and that's where I met Zelko Balecki, the goalie. And I I do love all sports when it's played at the highest level. Now, Val. Since you know the game really well, I want to ask you, what do you think? You know, we just had the World Cup and a whole bunch of different huge tournaments. And the World Cup is probably the biggest gathering of any sport in the world in soccer, whether you like it or not, football. Um, they brought in the uh, uh, the video replay where the the, uh, the the referee can go and he, he takes the screen and goes okay. like that. Okay, still way out of my league to understand when you're doing it, when you're not doing it. Our women's, Canadian women's team, is uh, is an incredible uh, team right now with St. Clair. But what do you think about that? As an old school, obviously you're an old school soccer guy. What do you think about the uh, the way they brought it in with the referee and the and the the video? And what's it exactly called? Uh, big shout out to Christine St. Clair for 186 uh, goals in her career. Uh, it's called VAR, Video Assistant Referee. And basically, what it is, um, it's a bit of growing pain right now. Uh, over in Europe, uh, we've had it in MLS. I believe this is our second or third season going into it. A lot of the jokes was we do the whole square when the referee makes a bad call. But from my, my understanding is in MLS, uh, the fourth official up in the booth that are viewing the game, they, they, they radio down, they communicate down to the referee on the field and they let him know, hey, you might want to have a look at this. There was a foul, there was a handball, there was an infringement, whatever it be. Upon that point, it's up to the referee to take the uh, the uh, uh, other official at tops uh, advice and go to the video screen. Right, have a, take the time, look at it, whether you can change your mind or not. That's the point of it. From what I understand, uh, this year in EPL in the English Premier League, um, it's new there, so the frustration that they're going through is what we had first in our first season in MLS for as a fan and stuff like that. But from what I understand is that the official, the officials 
above watching the video of the game or letting the official on the field what happened and the official on the field is not taking the time to go to the screen and whether or not changes changes call or not they're making that change of the call right away and i think that's what's frustrating a lot of the fans kind of thing where the official on the field is taking the word for the official up in the sky right uh our first year we had our growing pains everyone's having their growing pains in uh in europe right now it's it, you do get used to it uh now it's just a running joke where we're doing the square kind of thing uh, yeah, exactly. We just, it's one of those things. It's like, so I, I heard, uh, I heard last week they were talking about the English league, which is now is uh, been put to the side like everything else, but uh, Manchester United who are an incredible organization for a long time. Now, is it true uh, what I heard that they have such a lead um, point wise that even though they've shut the season down, it's almost impossible not to hand them the trophy this year because they've got such a massive league. Actually, Paul, it's uh, it's Liverpool. Liverpool's Liverpool has got such Liverpool. yeah. Liverpool, Manchester is in the middle of the table right now. Liverpool does have quite a lead. I think they've only lost. I'm gonna say at least twice in the league. If any of my friends are watching, they know I'm not a Liverpool. I'm a I'm a Wolves fan, just kind of thing. What is but Wolves? No, Where are the Wolves from? Uh, well, uh, Wolverhampton. I can't pronounce it. Wolverhampton. Okay. Wolverhampton Wolves. Sorry. How'd you get? How'd you get? After you finish answering the question. Why? Where did you pull that one out of your hat? Uh, it's actually a running joke. Half the uh, team is actually of Portuguese descent of the players. Oh, right now. So now we got it. So there's a running joke. It's like right. the Portuguese half the Portuguese team is playing in England, right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, actually, believe it or not, they uh, were they were in second division, and they won the second division and jumped up to first division last year, and they made a run beating top teams, and they've still been doing well. But yes, I digress. So it's actually uh, Liverpool. Get to get back to you, Paul. It is Liverpool. They've got such an incredible lead that it's guaranteed that they should be handed the trophy. But, I mean, it'll be disappointing if they can't continue the season and just make it a true uh, completion of their uh, of their season. They have been struggling in the uh, Champions League. They're down a game. As you guys well know, the Champions League, uh, UEFA just canceled their Champions League tournament. It is considered the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs of Europe for uh, soccer clubs. And uh, a lot of teams are, are in limbo, but I mean, they're in a good uh, spot to defend their title, which they won last year. And um, they, yeah, getting back to your question, Paul, they should be handed to it. They should be handed that trophy right away. There's nobody going to catch them. I think it's just a handful of games left. Hey, uh, Val, somebody just popped up here. I love you, Hans Garrett Schultz. He is a, a knowledgeable sports writer in Germany, and he's watching our show. What a compliment to us, I'll tell you, because this guy's one of the top reporters in uh, all sports. He follows hockey specifically, but he's a, an unbelievable guy. Here's what he just said. Liverpool lost only one game. I did say one or two. So They have a German coach, Jurgen Klopp. So that's yes. where they're winning because it's a German coach. Yeah, no, he's actually been one of the top coaches in the, in the, in the uh, sport the last number of years. He came from Baritzma Dortmund. If I mispronounce it, I, I apologize. Borussia. I think I think it's Borussia. You know, I think one of somebody will tell us. How hey, to yeah, know exactly. What? My my apologies I if realized, I messed that up. I just realized I'm actually on my sister's computer for the first time in my life. I got a computer and not a, a phone. And I just realized that off to the right, there's comments, and I'm scrolling them down now. This is incredible. I feel like I'm going back to school. Hey, there you um, go. My buddy Brooksy from Krefeld has just come on. And, and you know, there's one – this is fantastic because we're around the world. We're talking soccer, for God's sakes. We're supposed to be a hockey show. And I really appreciate uh, Val, you talking about this stuff because now that we're doing this, I'm going to learn a little bit about soccer. One of my all-time favorite goaltenders that I played with in, in Germany, in Timmendorfer uh he stayed up late to watch us, Ingel Spantek. Uh, one day I'll tell you a story about him and a guy named Harry Bulka. I will share some stories one day just like our buddy sebastian that are a little bit a little bit different it's not your typical nhl ahl east coast league stories uh the germans crazy um all right let's shift gears here a little bit uh obviously we're running on time so we want yeah. to 
about the new show. Um, we've been very fortunate to have guys like Kevin Hune and Thomas Grossman in Montreal, who's a producer of these type of shows. And of course, you know, Val, you've been with us. Paul and I've been kind of fumbling around the tech stuff and trying to get it. And Tony, my wife, has been absolutely fantastic. You know, again, with Stephen Ellis from the Hockey News. Uh, hopefully, when this all gets cleared up, we're going to be back working in the studio at, at the Hockey News. But you know what? We're just like any other uh, major league ESPN yeah. or late night talk show hosts. We're doing it from our living rooms and from our sister's bedroom. bedroom. <laughs> and I think you're in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, phenomenal technology is fantastic. And I'm really enjoying it. So let's do this. Let's talk about our new show. Um, I, you know, you know, I'm a little bit crazy and uh, I don't sleep very much. So at night the brain's really going and, and I really don't know how to use all this. So I Google, right? I say, okay, Google, tell me this. And so we came up with this idea. Tommy Grossman started off. We need to be different, right? We can't just be the typical, we're, you know, we're not those late night talk show hosts that have hundreds of thousands of people. So we need to try and get a, a statement. So our statement is because we know hockey, you know, volleyball and basketball, cricket, and soccer. We believe that we should make this kind of like a game. So starting next week, we're going to do it Friday. We're going to do our test show. It's going to be like a hockey game. And it's going to have the first period, right? Yeah, and definitely. We, you did all the all the graphics. First, we're going to do a warm-up. So if you guys just bear with me for a sec. We're going to do a warm-up. Pretty cool. Love there it. we are, yeah. Right? And then well, you got you got to go to the first period, I would assume. Right. Yeah, we're gonna hit the first period and right. let that run its course. Hang on. Let's Once see. in a while, I'll call a penalty if need be. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Don't get too far ahead of me. All right. All right. There we go. Okay. So now the first period we'll be discussing. The warm up will be Paul and I just talking about stuff, and then we'll go into the first period. It's going to be called the hockey news, hockey around the sports around the world, emphasis on hockey, of course. And then we're going to go into uh, what's called, I guess, you got to have. A first intermission, right? Yeah. So we'll do that. And this will be a couple of minutes where Paul will rant on about something or he'll bring up a, a topic. We'll be doing the Rosie rant uh, one time a week uh, on the Friday that we end the, the shows with. But during the other time, it'll be a two minute, three minute discussion with himself about sport. Yeah, I'm really excited to have the uh, Rosie's rant as a feature. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like we're going to. Uh, um, channel the old coach's corner kind of concept where Rosie gets his point, gets his moments to discuss whatever maybe what we've earlier warmed up what, or a first period guest comes on and such like that. And then we'll move on from there. Hey, well, listen to this. You know what? I love Hans. Hans, you got to do better than this one. Hans comes on and says, I, I'm only on the show because I have to stay at home. Normally at this time, I'm in the bar drinking Bitburger, but I like the show with a beer in the fridge. So, hey, Hans, I hope I hope this, uh, I, okay. I don't wish it upon anybody. I hope this goes a little bit longer than two weeks. And then we got you as a, one our number one fan. Yeah, as long as great. everyone still tunes in after the two weeks, <laughs> so we're good. All right. So, so second period's over, or what the second period's going to be. We're going to have a topic of the day. So we'll talk about mental health and sport. We'll talk about travel. We'll talk about lifestyle. Or maybe it's about, you know, the kids' tournaments, what we just did with Sebastian, or we're bringing Malcolm Sutherland. We'll talk just topic of the day or the week. Uh, and, and so that'll be the second period. And, of course, once you have a second period, you got to go to the second, second intermission. Week. What the second intermission will be is me talking about something, letting you know about different things that go around the world, different trophies that were that that were. Uh, obviously, we know that there's a tro the Goodall Cup in Australia, one of the oldest trophies ever, uh, still still played for by the AIHL, which is the Australian Ice Hockey League. So we'll tell little tidbits about information on history and sport, and then of course, uh, and that will be called what the puck. And what the puck means. We'll just talk everything about puck, and puck is hockey. All right. And finally, we got to move to the third period. What the third period is going to be all about, guys, is that we're going to bring in a special guest every week and so, or every day. So this week we're going to have uh, starting for Friday. We're just waiting to con confirm the timing. But we're going to have Daryl Sittler sitting in the seat right in front of you, and we're going to be talking all about Daryl Sittler, 10-point night, what's going on in the Leafs. And it's just going to be a phenomenal time. And Paul and I will be having a lot of guests out. I know, Paul, you just, you've got a special guest coming here. 
Yeah, Sammy Joe Small uh, started the Women's Hockey League, Professional Women's Hockey League, was my goalie coach for a little bit, uh, won a gold medal with the Canadian team in uh, Salt Lake City in 2002, and a great, great girl. Well, and, um, you know, I just want to do a shout out to Tommy Grossman. He's watching us. Thanks, Tom, for helping us do that. I'll be talking to you this weekend to get it all set up. Great idea. So after the third period, we have to obviously do what's called the wrap up. And once the wrap up is done, uh, if things are running a little bit long, uh, you know, there's the Rosie rant. Great looking graphics, uh, my friend. And there's going to be a lot more shown. But if we go overtime, you got to have an overtime. Love it. Yeah, the over love the it, overtime will be essentially where you'll have your five minutes, whatever. If you guys don't agree, whatever the topics happen in Rosie's rant or what the puck, you got your five minutes, two and a half aside. Yeah. Put put your case in point. My apologies. Have your case in point for your points, and then we'll let the fans who are watching the show just chime in with their comments. Love and, it. And we'll I love it. The next show. And, and no, there's more. There's more. Because we've got, and people you don't may not know this, we're on a program called Be Live that brings us live onto Facebook. Uh, I went to uh, Tech School uh, 101, and uh, unfortunately, you and I both, Carrie. You and I both. Unfortunately, I only only up only got up to 99. They wouldn't let me in, Gooch. They let you guys in. Right. And so what's really cool about this is that we're going to be able now with this fan interaction, which you guys see on the right hand side, we're getting the comments. People are asking questions. We are now going to be able to give away prizes. We're going to ask people to give us uh, comments. Gooch was good. Paul was terrible. Paul was great. Gooch, you were good. And we'll just get them who wins, who loses. We're going to make this like a game. So people, starting Friday, make sure you check it out. It's going to be a one-hour show, and it's going to be really entertaining. And we're going to have fantastic guests, just like we have today with Val Silva. And Val, thank you for all those great graphics and all, all the work you do for us. Because you know what? We wouldn't look as good. And right behind me, I don't know if you see it, Paul. Love it. I've got a unbelievable – I'm going to just take you guys off for a sec. Watch this technology. I'm, in, I'm the producer. Look at that. Wayne Gretzky. And right below him is his favorite player. Who's Wayne Gretzky's favorite player? Gary Goulet. No, no, no. Mark Messier. No, 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 no. Gordy no. Howe. You got it. All right, Val, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the show that, uh, you know, we've given you the concept. You've helped us put this together uh, with Tommy Grossman and, and Kevin Hewn, who's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, tell us what your thoughts are on it. Oh, no, I'm looking forward to it. It's been, it's been a fun ride thus far, you know, and I'm sure it's just going to get better uh, as each day goes on. Like you said, ESPN didn't have a great start when they started, but they, they exploded, and today they're – they're one of the top uh, television programs in the States. So, you know what? You think they actually started from their living room and their, their sister's bedroom? I'm no, not... but the, you know what, though? They started from a black, a dark room. So at least we have light. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to do a shout out to Robert Wine. He's been a big fan of ours. And you know what, Paul? Yeah. One of our shows we were talking with uh, uh, yesterday with Brad Thorpe, uh, John Cabers came on. And, you know, Johnny's, uh, what, 75 and still physically fit. He goes out and does these incredible photos. And he was telling me about a couple of things that he's doing. So I really think it's important that we bring in John one day just to talk about, uh, you know, as you as we age with all the injuries, you know, he was hurt uh, several times playing rugby. I'd love to hear his perspective on how he, at 75, does what he does. And he's on the ice. He still skates. Yeah. He, he, he kayaks. Uh, incredible, and I'd love to know, you know, what type of uh, what type of I job. Saw, I saw him, him a couple of days ago. Put on Facebook where he was doing push-ups outside. Yeah. I think those were burpees from his. I, knee. I don't know burpees, push-ups, whatever. And he could tell the story how your mother, uh, the great Shirley Goulet, almost killed him. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's a few stories about that. Hey, listen, Val. Before we let you go, we want to talk about some serious stuff. <laughs> I know everybody's talking about the. Uh, the coronavirus, and, and you have a young son that we love, Ronaldo. I call him Ronaldo because he's such a good soccer player, Christian. Um, can you give us a little bit of perspective on what you're doing? You know, you've seen their show where we've had, you know, guys like Francois Landerville, uh, uh, Malcolm Sutherland, 
uh, come on and talk about, you know, obviously training, um, you know, and, and, and having your child not doing what they love right at this particular moment because they're, they're kind of in that, in that space of self-isolation. As you as a parent, what are you doing to help him get through these hard times? Well, you know, we're actually quite lucky that we do have a yard that we can go out and play and such like that. Uh, just like what Chris said yesterday in his in his interview with you guys in this conversation, it's all about routine. Uh, my son's season got cut short. Luckily, we only had two games left. I think the boys were all looking for their uh, derby game because that was the game that was cut against this other team we're supposed to be playing. I mean, as coaches are hoping that the season starts uh, sometime in April, we all are, but we've gotten uh, a routine down that all the, the coaching staff, they're a great bunch of guys in the academy that he plays with, great bunch of kids and teammates and everything. We do have a routine that his coaches do send with them, sent to us. Uh, we are actually going to start that today. Uh, he's been in a school routine, but uh, the great thing about it is that with his soccer routine, I'm actually going to be taking part with him because it'll do me some good and we can both start enjoying the game uh, once again, because we've had this little lull where I think ourselves and a bunch of other kids, whether it be soccer, hockey, uh, baseball coming up the season and everything, you know, you'd be out there because the weather is starting to get uh, better even to, to play out there. So we are fortunate to have a yard that we can go out to. And um, yeah, like Chris said yesterday and um, my wife and I, we believe it's just routine. And I think, that's all you can really do is, is just have a routine, try to keep it as normal as possible. But you know what? You do the best you can with what you got. You know, luckily we're healthy. Like uh, you guys are doing well. Friends and family are doing well. So it, times could be worse, as they say. You know, we're very fortunate and lucky. So All right. Just before we wrap it up and Paul gives you the last question, I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, thank you for all you're doing for us. Uh, really look forward to Friday, the show. You've been a mastermind behind the scenes with Tommy Grossman and Kevin Hewn to help me put it together. Tony has done a fantastic job reeling it all together. And Paul and I are very thankful for that. But I just want to talk about a couple of really important things before you ask the final question, Paul. You know, it's been trying times for all of us, but I think there's a lot of optimism. I know all of us, we're not, you know, in the fetal position on the couch. We are actually out there trying to do what we've been doing now to entertain and hopefully bring some knowledge and bring some excitement and even, you know, a little bit of entertainment for, for people that maybe are on that couch. And we're going to get you up off the couch because we are obviously dealing with a, a troubling time uh, with Connected, our new uh, mental health initiative. Paul and I are working hard uh, getting people to help us with this new platform. Uh, and I'll tell you what, when you go to connectedmentalhealth.com, uh, please check it out. Uh, it's got a lot of great information, but I just wanna pass on these three things that I saw today that are really important. As you go through this, whether you're an adult or you're a child and you're controlling the situation for your child, these are the three things that we need to do. And uh, the first thing is, let's eat healthy. While we're going through this, I'm catching myself right now. Uh, Tony went out and bought a bag of chips yesterday. And I'll tell you what, they were good. They were good because <laughs> I finished the whole bag of chips watching CNN. So one, number <laughs> one the most important thing right now, I take it serious, let's eat healthy as best we can. The second is, is be kind to yourself. Don't, don't beat yourself up over this. There's nothing we can do about this. This is out of our hands. But what we can do is take care of us. And if we take care of ourselves, that we then can take care of others. So stay active. I, you know, joking around, I promise to get on the treadmill and start working out. It's three days in a row, guys, three days in a row. I've been on the treadmill for a minimum of 20 minutes. Today, I've already been on it for 20 minutes this morning. I'm going to go back on and do it. So my challenge is out there. All you people that have the belly I got, I want to see you get on the treadmill, work it out. Uh, the last one is, and I think this one is really important, and we say it far too often, but we don't do it. Stay connected. Take the time right now. As soon as you get off, I know there's about 25 people here that have been watching. We've had, you know, tremendous comments um, wherever you are, whether you're in Germany, Australia, uh, watching the show. As soon as you hang up or you're in Toronto, anywhere in Canada, pick up the phone and call somebody. Please be your mom, be your father, be your son, be your daughter, whatever. Somebody that maybe you haven't spoken to for a while and just say, hey, it's the Gooch. How you doing? I think you cannot... 
You cannot give a value to that. It's so important right now to let people know that you're thinking of them. So those are my final things. And I learned today from a young man in Germany when I was talking to him, time of crisis is time of chances and changes. So let's not take this as a negative. I know it's not a positive, but let's, when we get out of this, let's make sure we make a change and we make this world a better place to be. All right, Paul. Well said, not- buddy. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm just going to say very, very similarly, you know, Val, uh, thanks for everything. You know, me, technically, I have done absolutely nothing to help the program go forward with all the guys that Gooch said that have helped them. And Tony, of course, in their house, uh, locked down in the Gooch Manor Fortress. Uh, me, I'm brutal at all that. But I will bring is I will bring my energy and I will bring my uh, my passion, not just for hockey, but for life in general. Today, everybody knows that it was 13 months ago that I tried to take my own life. And uh, on February, Wednesday, February 19th of last year, I started seeing an addiction doctor. Every Wednesday morning, I saw him. And today was the first time in the Wednesday for an entire year or over a year because we're in March now that I couldn't see him today. Every Wednesday morning, I'd start my Wednesday morning by seeing him, talking about my recovery and mental health and my suicide uh, attempt and all the uh, things that uh, that I was doing and then have my test to make sure that I was still clean. And, and, and uh, today was the first time that we had to do it on the telephone. So my thing out there to any of you that are watching, whether you're young or old, man or woman, child, it doesn't matter, and you're dealing with an addiction issue and you cannot see your particular physician right now, you must reach out. You know, we'll put my number up, like Gooch said with his number. I'm an open book, 647-669-6857. Call me anytime. I don't care, three in the morning, doesn't matter. You must, must, must ask for help even more than normal because of the times right now. For me, it's been an absolute honor to to be on Gooch Live and to do this and come to you. Uh, Val, thanks for making Rosie's rant, R-O-S-E-Y. I appreciate that. That's a guy's Rosie. And I will rant on Friday. My first rant is going to be a beauty, man. Uh, As long as as it isn't about me. I'm going to rant about people in this world that are absolutely taking this to the wrong level and insanity creeps into the human psyche. And well, you we'll watch on Friday. We'll give your rant right now, buddy. Don't give your rant right now. I'm going to be bringing it, Gooch. I'm going to be bringing it. And mm-hmm. all, I'm just going to end it as I always do. Gooch loves you. Rosie loves you. And Val loves you. Hey, as we go out, I just want to thank everybody for taking some time to be with us. Please. Not only make uh, pick up the phone and make a call. If you need us, we're here. Go check out Connected Mental Health. You've got to be there. We've got lots of advice, and we're there for you, no question. It's time to connect the world through digital right now. But as soon as we get out of jail, kids, we're going. Hey, if I get out of jail, do I get the two hundred bucks for going around the Monopoly board? No. Oh, we get two hundred bucks. No. All right, guys. <laughs> hey, Michelle Barrett, you missed it. Look at him wearing an Indian shirt. All right. Okay, guys, thank you. You've been watching Gooch Live, brought to you by the Hockey News featuring Paul Rosen. Thanks, guys. Christian Hockey. You got it. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Be safe.